everyone has a bright light inside of them that deserves to be seen by the world. That's why it's time to shine the light on the extraordinary who are accomplishing phenomenal things. This is the Shine Out Loud show with Lillian Ogbogo. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you are. Yes, you know what time it is. It's another episode of the Shine Out Loud show with me, Lillian Obogo. Now, I am excited because I have a woman on here who is doing, let's call her the Upwork, the People Per Hour. Let's call her the mistress of disrupting the fashion industry with tech. Let's call her the founder and the creator of Style Mags. I'm talking about Candy Ellie Graham. Hey, Candy, how you doing? Hi, what a wonderful intro. Thank you so much. I'm doing fine, Lillian. You are welcome. You're welcome. And, you know, the intro is well and truly deserved because, woman, you are doing some fantastic thing so let's jump in so let's say let's start with this we people may know of you as the founder of fashionista sister so who were you prior to fashionista sister so prior to fashionista sister i would have been very young actually um very early 20s and i used to work in tv Okay. So I was a production runner, then I went on to become a series producer for a Christian youth talk show called Keep It Real. Okay. And I ended my TV career as an assistant producer for um, Sky TV on their live um, interactive gaming channels. Oh, now that's awesome. That is really awesome because you're talking about early twenties. This is what you started doing. So I, and then you went from that into marketing. How did you, how did marketing come into play into all of this? It was, it was, it felt like a natural transition um, because whilst I was doing the keep it real um, talk show, Mm -hmm. I did a lot of the like marketing and the branding and the promotion, but it's not what I studied at university. At university, I studied um, content creation for broadcasting and new media. So I went to um, what was at the time, maybe, I don't know if it still is, it was one of the top schools to go to if you wanted to get into television. Okay. It's called um, Ravensbourne College of Design and Communication. Uh So, um, yeah, so after I, as I came towards the end of my contract in Sky, Mm -hmm. Um, I had a moment where I kind of felt like I really didn't want to work in TV um, anymore. There were some things I saw that I was uncomfortable with. I loved fashion. I loved marketing. And so I went and I did a postgraduate um, diploma in marketing communications. And yeah, that kickstarted my marketing career. Okay. Yeah. So it helped the transition. You did the education. You know, the Nigerian parents must be so proud. Look, I have my child. She has her first degree. I think I'm actually doctorate. <laughs> They're waiting for the doctorate. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, now, Nigerian parents are not easy. They're like, yeah, yeah, we know. But your, your cousin is a doctor and a lawyer at the same time. What are you doing? <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so... You had all of this, you were working in marketing. Then what led you to say, I was going to create Fashionista Sister? It was a lack of representation Mm -hmm. in the digital sphere, sorry, sphere at the time. So you had um, Facebook, there Mm -hmm. was MySpace, um, there wasn't Instagram yet. So Instagram did change the game, but Mm -hmm. there was no Instagram. And I I loved like... um, getting dressed I love doing my makeup and doing my hair but other than my you know like my favorite publication which is um, Black Hair and Beauty magazine Mm -hmm. there wasn't much um, that was based in the UK that was representative in my opinion and there wasn't much online so I got together with a few other friends and we spoke about um you know, how can we put more representation online? How can we get put more inspiration online? And the original idea for Fashion as a Sister was to have online style galleries. Right. So like, um, I'm Nigerian. And 
when we go to our cultural celebrations, we like to wear our traditional wear, you know, yes. everybody gets the same material. It's called Ashawebi and you sew it. And, but it's like finding these modern styles. It was very difficult to kind yeah. of like get inspiration and then hairstyle inspiration online. And I'm talking way back in like 2000 and like, I think it was 2006, seven. That so, would have been a, a very tricky thing to do exactly. because even when you mentioned MySpace and I'm thinking, Jesus, there's some people who are alive that have no clue <laughs> what MySpace yeah. is. I, I almost feel the need to kind of say to them, it's like what we had before there was the introduction of Facebook. And yeah. instead of Mark Zuckerberg, we had Tom, who was always everyone's first friend. But yeah. that's a whole different <laughs> conversation. Of course, yeah. Tom was my <laughs> first friend on MySpace. Exactly. Um, Tom was yeah. everybody's friend. Um, and, and so it was that, and I can imagine what it's like looking out, because even for me, looking back, you if you there was not a lot in the uk yes you could find it stateside yeah. but in the uk was and europe would have been very lacking in representation for women that look like us very lacking and not just for black women um i went to a secondary school in east london where i had so many asian friends turkish friends and it was the same thing um mm -hmm. we didn't feel like there was enough representation um so the initial idea for fashion as the sister was to create an online website that had style inspiration, mm -hmm. like galleries, images, and the directory aspect came along later. Right. So, yeah. Okay, so, and this in itself was a journey because there's, you're also on YouTube and it seems that you took that at that time very early on to start creating these amazing well-produced YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. how, did you, how did you come back creating them to that quality? And um, because I came from a broadcasting background, so it was useful to, it was very good to be able to use those skills in that way. Right. And also I just, I just love, I love the visuals. I love seeing moving images. I just love seeing, you know, women of all cultures just looking beautiful, talking about what's important to them. I mm. love giving people a platform to talk about what they're doing. And that is what we did through the YouTube channel. We gave up and coming artists. We gave fashion designers. We gave um, people that were doing big things in, mm. um, you know, Afro fashion and beauty at the time, an opportunity to come on the channel and talk about what they were doing. Yeah. And I think that there's so much that the power of that helping people to actually tell their own story, yeah. own your own story and carve out their narrative mm. at a time when the gays would have been very Western. A lot of those type of channels would have been catered for for women that didn't look like us. And whether yeah. you're brown or black, it wasn't catered for the brown black woman. I mm. saw recently watched the video you, um, of Nadine Charles on there. So oh, yeah. it's, it's actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is actually really, really powerful. So, you know, looking at that, um, you went on and what, what led to you saying being no longer involved with Fashionista Sister? Okay. What happened? I think it was a case of um, experience. Mm -hmm. I was very young. And timing. So at the time, um, I did get Prince's Trust back in. Right. Um, I'm one of the few degree holders to have ever gotten Prince's Trust back in. Um, I got a office. I had an office in East okay. London through something called the London Youth Support Trust, who were doing okay. great things to support um, urban talent at the time. Um, but I was so overwhelmed, Lillian. I, I was just so overwhelmed. Oh, wow. Um, I, I, I just couldn't do it. At the time, mm. I couldn't do it. And I had a decision to make. Do I plow on and see what happens? Or do I take a break and try other things? And I decided to take a break. And I had lots of regrets at the time. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, people around me were like, you know, why did you walk away from this? You had everything. You had an office. You had funding if you wanted it you had visibility people were starting to take notice of you mm -hmm. but I just couldn't handle it and I was managing um a team of contributors you know young girls there was lots of friction at times and right. yeah I just felt like I wasn't equipped but looking back now 
I feel like it was one of the best decisions I ever made because I went on from there to become a marketing manager, right. managing a small team. And the skills I learned there and the skills I've learned in my career after that have helped me to now come back and launch Styles Mag in a totally different way and in a way that is more manageable, scalable, mm. and also with a more mature head on my shoulders. Yeah. You know what? Congratulations on actually making that decision and saying yes. It's 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 a challenge that I'm I'm challenging decision I'm making, yeah. but you made one. And even you know you're you're talking about you were quite young. You took a very matured step rather than plowing on and going to burnout. You said. Yeah. I needed a break. And that's yeah. something we will talk about, especially as women of color. Mm. How do we manage the burnout? How do we manage taking those breaks? How do we manage to not allow the strong black woman stereotype to become our undoing? Definitely. So, so we've talked about what led you down the road to saying fashionista sister, it's going to be no more, but what, what brought style mags into existence for you? Okay. I would say it was, I felt so unsettled in my career. Mm -hmm. It's like, no matter how much I achieved, it's like, no matter what I was able to do, I just mm -hmm. felt like this was not what I wanted to do. Right. You know, for the rest of my work in life, I, it, it, the dream, like the vision, it stayed with me. But over the years, I would see other platforms kind of pop up that had, you know, similar, but not exact um, right. ideas. And I'd, I'd be like, okay, now they're doing it. Now they're doing it. Now they're doing it. Uh -huh. um, and I gave myself the excuse of, you know, I don't have funding. I don't have time and all the mm -hmm. rest of it. But then what prompted me to actually, you know, just dive in and like get it done um, was when I was on maternity leave. Okay, so my son is about, my son is two years old now. So when okay. I was on maternity leave, um, I was at home and I was working on another project, which is right. still in a pipeline, not live yet. And I just thought to myself, you know, let me do a little audit. Let me do a little bit of research and see what's going on in regards to hair and beauty platforms now, because I have time now to start working on Styles Mag. Right. And so I, I did that. I did some research, um, I updated my original business plan, and I saw that although these other similar platforms had, you know, popped up, mm -hmm. nobody had the exact same offering that, um, you know, I wanted to offer. Nobody was really going out into, into the communities and finding these, these local hidden talents and, right. you know, putting them out there because it takes work. These people, they're not on Instagram. They're not on um, Yellow Pages. They're not on Gumtree. They're in Dalston Market. They're in Brixton Market. They're in Birmingham. They're in the communities. They're hidden. And yes. it takes a lot of work to find them. And that's what I set out to do. So okay. with my baby, sometimes on my back, the Nigerian way, sometimes in the buggy, I went out and I started speaking to people in the community. I started asking them, you know, why aren't you on Instagram? You know, hmm. why aren't you, um, why don't you have a booking link? And it was just like, oh, I don't know. I don't know how to do it. I don't have the confidence. It's mm. too complicated. And if you see some of their work, some of these tailors, you know, some of these, um, even in like Green Street, some of the Mendy artists, the, the henna mm. artists mm -hmm. um, in the Asian communities, they are so talented. Of course. Yeah, and I, I said to them, people would come if they knew how to find you. Mm -hmm. you know, do you want to be part of this platform? And many of them said yes. And it, it kind of gave me the confidence to realize, actually, do you know what? There is a place for this. So that was part of it. And the other part of, um, because I am a bit of a perfectionist, mm -hmm. I had a look at what the other platforms, right? the online customer journey, the user experience. And I felt confident that I could offer something that was a little bit better, a little bit more, you know, to a higher standard. I can make it more accessible through apps on both app stores. Mm -hmm. I had the expertise. I had the skills. And so I started working on it. Um, it wasn't easy, Lillian. <laughs> it was not easy. I cannot, you know, anyone else think that it is easy? Well, we'll say, okay, go do it and try and come back and report. Yeah. It never <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. So, you know, I don't criticize any of the other platforms mm. or 
how other people do it. Um, I, I wasn't criticizing what I said. I just recognized I could do it a little bit different um, because I know how hard it is to get something off the ground. And I know how hard it is to keep something off the ground. Mm. Um, over the past month, because of my amazing PR um, person, Ronke um, from Ariatu PR, you know, I've been getting some exposure. Um, but what people don't realize is I actually launched last year. Right. I launched in August 2019, but it was a very soft launch. It was a beta launch. I didn't mm. want to make too much noise about it because as I went live, I was still testing and improving the platform based on feedback. I was still slowly populating um, the platform with um, service providers. Um, I didn't want to have a directory that was full of unclaimed listings. Right. Um, so just to explain what they are, there are many directories that have loads of people on there, but they're unclaimed listings. So there's no pictures, there's no recent information. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, a list. It's just there. It's just there. And I, I didn't want that because before somebody makes um, a decision to contact a service provider, you want to see pictures, you want to see course. reviews. You want to be able to contact them and know that the contact information is still live. So I, I did all of that work and I had to go back to work as well because I still work. And so things slowed down a little bit, but it, it was beautiful and scary. <laughs> you know what? First and foremost, amazing work and congratulations on the soft launch. And, and of course, congratulations on the, you know, the pickup in terms of, being noticed the visibility and it, it takes a lot of work it takes that yeah. almost blood sweat and tears and so to actually see it come live yes it, it's I won't equate it to having a child but I will equate it to that same level of intensity to to put mm -hmm. then to birth and you know sometimes people don't understand what that journey is like and so I, I love that you've 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 put the time in. you wanted to make sure that it was right for your audience yeah. and 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 yes I, I I have to say it I do love Ronkela Wall I think she's amazing with what she does yeah. as well yeah. <laughs> so you've done this, you've done this in a year, you've brought this to life, you're still working as well, you're managing motherhood, so you're doing a lot of things. But let's go back to Style Mags for a minute, just so that we get a full sense of what this, this creation is. It's, yeah. it's a place, it's a directory where people can come on, find local suppliers in the diaspora, across, not just in London, across the diaspora, for yeah. where, who can take care of our hair, our skin, tailors and so you're working with you you're, co you're creating a collaborative partnership with your providers yeah. how do you select the individuals to showcase on style mags um okay so it's through two methods so some people i go out into the community and i actually i hunt out <laughs> I go out there and I look for them and I speak to them and I sign them up. Um, right. And that is more or less like an assisted sign up service. Okay. These people, they aren't web savvy. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't find me online. I found them. Right. So I take pictures of their work and I help them put it online. Okay. Um, the other way is just through traditional marketing. So mm -hmm. there's online marketing, um, mostly online. I've got leaflets in stores, in okay. hair and beauty stores. Um, at the moment, only in London, UK. Right. But I'm working on expanding that. Some in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. um, so that's in hair and beauty stores, fabric stores. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think those are the two main stores, really. Um, so those people, they either pick up a leaflet or they just find us through social media mm -hmm. or maybe through other PR that's gone out and they sign up themselves. Okay. And also um, in the early stages, we were giving people free listings. Okay. So there were some people that we did seek out online. Right. And we reached out to them and said, we love what you're doing. We're trying to fill up this directory. We're giving you a free profile. And yeah, they were like, thank you. And yeah, so those are the free methods. They're free methods, actually. Okay. But, yeah. So, and I love this. I love the fact that it's going into the communities, it's finding those as we call them, the hidden gems. I mean, the, yeah. you know, the ones who are impacting that you have to kind of 
call an auntie after you've asked your mom who yeah. has to call that auntie because only that auntie has that number to yeah. get to. And these are the people they may, and they make such exquisite designs. And you're like, why are you not more known? Why are you not more visible? So I honestly, I have to say, I love the idea of what style mags is putting together. Yes. And, you know, you talked about representation um, earlier when we, we started and, do you think in marketing that, you know, there's enough diversity in the industry currently? And if there isn't, what needs to be done to actually create more, more movement in that area? Are you talking about in terms of hair and beauty? And I'm talking about the industry of marketing because you are still in marketing as well at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Um, because we're talking about representation and we'll come into the representation for the yeah. conversation around representation for hair and beauty. But I'm thinking of yeah. the industry itself, because when you think of marketing, you think of the big marketing corporations, even when we think of PR, it's, it's still the gaze is going towards white owned companies yeah. or white marketers, white PR executives. When you have exceptional people like Ronke Lawal, yeah. who is an expert in her field. Do yeah. you think that we still need more diversity in those industries? Definitely. Definitely. We definitely do need more diversity in those industries. It's getting better. Mm -hmm. um, and I pray it continues to get better. Um, sometimes I fear that, you know, especially for black people at the moment, there's an element of tokenism in the corporate world. Um, I don't know if I can say that. Can I say that? But you it just, you just like, did. You it just did. did. <laughs> it just feels like there's an element of uh, tokenism in mm. the corporate world because nobody wants to look like they're racist. So they're trying to get more, you know, black people on in the board. room. Yeah. But um, it's difficult. Because on the one hand, it's a, it's a move in the right direction. But on the other hand, is it being done for the right reasons? Is mm. it being done because you actually believe these people are good at what they do and you want to give them an opportunity? Or because you're afraid of the PR backlash of the... Yeah, the optics. Yeah, and how it might look. Do you know, I saw something really funny. Somebody posted a post um, mm. about... Um, do you know when they had the Blackout Tuesday? Yep. Yeah, and um, a girl posted a meme about, you know, after Blackout Tuesdays, you know, you know, they put up one black square, then everybody was dark skin on their feed <laughs> <laughs> for like, you know, the next few weeks. And then slowly the shade started going back down. So it kind of went, you know, it was, it was, you know, Caucasian, white, 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 black square, dark, 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 dark. <laughs> and then it just <laughs> faded out, um, which which kind of just highlights the fact that for some people it was just a, a fad, a temporary yes. change. It was a trend. It was a, tr that's the perfect word. You know, it, it was a trend. And I, I do hope that things can change. Mm -hmm. And I do want to be part of that change. I think the mere fact that style mags exist, even the mere fact that you created Fashionista Sister, that's already already part of that change mm -hmm. whether it's seen worldwide or not is the fact that you put black or brown women giving them the opportunity to mm. fully express their stories i mm -hmm. think that we have to acknowledge that first and foremost when you, we are part of that representation yeah. and actually being unapologetic about it so we're looking at style mags we're looking at marketing we're looking at everything that you've done and so I guess my one question would be what have been what are the biggest challenges that you face as an entrepreneur who's merging tech and the fashion industry I think one of the biggest challenges that I have faced and I'm still facing is the lack of funding hmm. um, my platform was completely is completely self-funded Right. Um, in the process now of trying to secure some seed investment in exchange for, for shares. Okay. Um, I did it the other way around. I wanted to beta launch and test first so I would have something a little bit more tangible to show to potential investors, investors. rather than going to them, you know, before I've done anything and then trying to, because how do you measure the market size of a community that's hidden? Mm. You know, there are no statistics to say there are this many, um, you know, 
African aunties that sew in the markets or, <laughs> you know, Asian aunties that sew, you know, in shops mm. that are above other shops, you know, those kind of things. So I wanted to have something that I could take to investors um, to get that funding. I think uh, another struggle I have is as a mom who still has to work is um, I still have a child to raise, you know, and that is my most important job. Yes. So, you know, mompreneur, when I first heard the term mompreneur before I was a, a mom myself, I was like, oh, they're just trying to create something new. It's just something new. You're, you're an entrepreneur who happens to be a mom. Get over it. But I do think we kind of need our own title because we're doing a lot of things at the same time. And if you do have to work on top of that, mm. then, you know, I have so much respect for you because I know exactly what it's like. So the next step for me right now is I'm trying to secure some seed funding to mm -hmm. help expand because I need a team. Right. I have people that come on board ad hoc, um, some for training, some for payment. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I could do so much more if there were five candies. <laughs> you know what? I believe that if there were five candies, you will take over the world. So... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But yes, I do, I do recognize the need for a team is absolutely crucial. And I think one of the Kool-Aids that we've been sold in the entrepreneurial journey is you have to go it alone. You have to, you know, you do everything. I'm like, yeah, no, 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 you can't. You can't do everything. So yes, I love the fact that you're like, nope, I need a team to accomplish everything I need to accomplish. Plus I have to raise my son. Mm -hmm. And so we are going to be talking more about that. And I was actually, I want to talk about something that I read because you did an interview in Keep the Faith where you talk about struggling with your with identity issues which yeah. were rooted in the feelings of rejections that yeah. you know and that centered around being African was not cool growing up yeah. and, and I, I have to say I laughed out loud when I read that piece about the the treads and yeah. you know because you have to have the, <laughs> the treads and you, your mom is doing your hair and you end up looking like a starburst is coming out from your yeah. head and you're having to explain <laughs> to people and you know children are cruel yeah. So I guess my question is, and in, 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 and in seriousness, my question will be, how can we ensure that the next generation of children do not struggle with the same issues? I think we can do that by making sure that they see more representation, right. that they see more people that look like them, um, that are celebrated and that look like them and are being celebrated as being beautiful not yes. just look like them and they're in the public um, mm. realm. Um, threading is such a great way to look after Afro hair because our hair, you know, it takes a lot of maintenance. Yes. Um, so threading, it protects it, it stretches it out. And I used to love it when they would take out, you know, when you just pull one string. Yeah, and, then... and, <laughs> <laughs> and there's a particular sound. There's a sound that it makes. It goes, <laughs> and you're like, yeah. <laughs> And then all, all of the thread comes out and like until water touches your hair, it's like, it's like long and it's soft. <laughs> but, but the bullying you would endure whilst your hair was threaded, you know, I, I it, it's serious chemical treatment and I had a jerry curl. Oh Lord, child. <laughs> they oh, gave no. me, um, cause my mom was away a lot. My, she just gave me a jerry curl. So wherever I went, I would just slap the activator on. And from, I went from jerry curl to relaxer to weaves, which, you know, it did damage my hair. Mm. It did damage my hair. And now, thankfully, you know, I'm giving my secrets away. You can wear wigs now. So, <laughs> Girl, know? don't worry. There's no secrets here. We're all friends. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's fine. But um, I want to hopefully create... Uh, create a platform where such styles are celebrated mm. and you know styles mag is more than just a directory you know we have the blog right. we have um the um inspiration galleries yes and you can create a free account on the website and save your favorite images to your own inspo boards so if you want to log back in and find oh what was that hairstyle i liked that i tagged you know it's all saved for you and our style galleries are interactive. Mm -hmm. So if you see a style you like, you can just double click and go to the profile of the person who it's linked to. Or right. if you 
the a wig you like, you can double click and buy it. <laughs> so and that's always important. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there's there's lots on there. I, I just want people to be able to connect with other people and other service providers who know how to look after their hair, their skin, who get their cultural wear. I just want you know, culture not to be a taboo thing mm. where you have to make a phone call and that person phones another person who phones another person who WhatsApp you the number, you know. <laughs> it's like some kind of underground movement. Underground, and that's how it is now. <laughs> that's how it is now. Sometimes when you need a tailor, you know, you phone this friend who phones that auntie who phones that auntie. And then, you know, that's how you find your, well, that's and how then, I used to find my tailors. Yeah, and then you end up in someone's house in mm. some part of South London and you're like, Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I have material. <laughs> it, it does. It sometimes it does feel like that. It, I have yeah. material. <laughs> it, it does feel like that. So my my hope is that you know, no matter where you are or who you are, and just as a side note, my platform is not just for um, people of um, color. Mm-hmm. It's for people who want to learn about our culture, about right. Asian culture, about different culture. I, I met a lady at a birthday party who um, is a Caucasian lady right. who's married to a Nigerian man. Right. And when I told her about the platform, she was like, oh, that's amazing. We've just moved to Croydon and mm. I don't know how to find anybody to help me with my children's hair. Uh, and that's and then, cool. Yeah. And she said, we were gifted so much material at our wedding and I would love to sew us all matching outfits. I don't know mm. how to find a tailor near us. And so, you know, th- there's a lot of people that are marrying into different cultures who want to learn, yeah. you know, who don't have access to information. So Styles Mag is for them too. Okay. And that actually brings up an important point because yeah. with so much talk around cultural appropriation and everything that is, you know, mm. happening right now, how can people, it, like, you know, with, the example of the, the, the woman who was married to the Nigerian guy who's like, mm-hmm. I want to get outfits made. And how can they actually do this in a way that is more conscious? Because we've seen the likes of the Kadassian who would put something on and then try to claim it the same way they somehow try to claim braids and our ass. But that's a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How can we how can we make it so that and not just from the perspective of you and I, but how can it be a more acceptable conversation for them to be able to say, I want to know more without them feeling like they're appropriating? Um it's a very interesting question, but personally I haven't taken offense to, you know, when I see people doing what a lot of people call appropriating. Hmm. In a way, I see it as them maybe not necessarily given the credit to Mm -hmm. um, certain communities, but, you know, embracing and enjoying, you know, styles Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, you know, fashion that is more um, connected to other communities. So I, I I personally, I don't take offense at that. I mean, where it, it can become offensive is where it's renamed or introduced as new. And and yeah, and credit is not given, yes. you know. So, like, you know, if you you do a type of cornrow rather than say, you know, these are Fulani braids, you say, you know, this is a Hollywood corn. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, 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 I think I'm the word saying. is it's, it's it's this is the goddess braid, and yeah, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's <laughs> a, a way to do it more nicely because I'm being very political here is <laughs> is to maybe do some research into where it originated from and introduce Mm -hmm. it as that. Yes. Yeah. But do you think we culturally appropriate when we wear long weave down to our knees? Uh, You see, that's a, then that's comes into the area of question of, are we just trying to fit into culture that Mm -hmm. makes us feel like our own natural hair is unacceptable. Can you imagine going into, um, I used to work for a lot of banks. Can you imagine Mm -hmm. me working as a project manager, going into work with my hair in thread (laughs) thread, and it's done in the basket, you know, the basket (laughs) style that is then interlocked at the top and I rock up for my first day of work. Can you imagine what that would look like? Or I've done, um, you know, 
cornrows and done the the ones where it, it claps at the back and there's a bit to the suck su- can you just imagine the the conversations that we'll have to have with hr so the question is are we appropriating or we are trying to assimilate mm-hmm. and then that becomes a whole different question and so so when people say yeah but you wear wigs and i go well because if i don't you consider me unprofessional you look at mm-hmm. me as my style is less than, and then that's a whole different conversation. Now, thank God, there's now the whole movement where natural hair is becoming more accept- acceptable mm-hmm. and more visual. And even the wigs that we now wear, <clears throat> not saying this is, um, <laughs> we then, we can now have our hair like this. We can mm-hmm. now show up more. I can do braids and do, um, a braid style with an undercut and something and look like, Oh, you're being rather exotic and funky. I'm like, whatever you want to call it, it's fine. Yeah. (laughs) And you can still kind of, you know, so Mm. it becomes a hard question. And so for me, I think, like you said, appropriation, sometimes it it becomes a step too far in, in that quest. I think for me, sometimes when you see people who are wearing something and they do it not to make fun of, but they're doing it because they love the style, they think it's beautiful, and they may not be educated on the history. Yes. I think instead of vilifying, I think educate. Yes, definitely. That's 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 how I, I view it. So if somebody wants to wear something from what I consider culturally mine, I will explain if they're doing it wrong or go and trivializing, then I, then I take umbrage. But if I, if mm. you're saying to me, I love this, I've seen, you know, when you go to your parties and you see these women wearing these big fins and, you know, I know it's coral beads, so I've bought them and I'm wearing them. And then you explain, yeah, but there's all, it's only worn at a particular time. And that's why people are looking at you funny because it feels like, and you explain, Yes. And if the person takes the explanation, then it's, it's all good. But yeah. like you said, when somebody comes up with Conroe's and that is Fulani, and then mm-hmm. rename it Goddess Conroe, and you're like... <laughs> <laughs> it's a different, yeah. But, I totally understand. It becomes a different thing. So, mm-hmm. you know what? So I think that's that's a good place to leave that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and just, just one thing to add off the back of that... Um, through our blog, through the blog mm-hmm. on Styles Mag, I have been trying to educate people on cross-cultural beauty as well, mm-hmm. not just Afrocentric, but, you know, Asian as well. Like, for example, you know, henna, mm-hmm. you know, the henna art, I've yes. noticed it's crossed over a lot now. Everybody kind of does it. It's, mm-hmm. you know, it's more, it's more of a temporary tattoo now than a cultural yep. thing. Whereas, you know, originally it's part of like, you know, the, the bridal um ceremony mm-hmm. you know your family come together blessings are spoken mm-hmm. over you and that is how it's done so sometimes I do wonder how do these communities feel about you know other people now just using it as patterns sometimes putting henna on their bum bum you know it's like a tattoo <laughs> it's like <laughs> there's, there's a lot a lot of education needs to happen and I don't yes. think I don't think the average person just intends to be really disrespectful. To no. Cultures. It's, they just don't know. And, just and don't I know. think, yeah, and we all are to some extent culturally ignorant to we, we, are, are, yeah. we are educated. And, you know, and even within our own diaspora, when we look at what's African and everybody wants to wear a particular pattern and then Kente becomes, and, and I'm sure Ghanaians are like, no, that's not how you wear it, darling. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think, yeah, there, there is that education that needs to be had across the board. And I'm, I'm so glad that Style Mags is doing that. Yeah. So we're looking at, uh, at trends. We're looking at things that are happening. We're looking at strides. We've spoken about the changes that are even happening in hair. So from your perspective, what strides in hair care and fashion has grabbed your attention in a positive way? I think you touched on it earlier just women having the confidence to embrace their natural hair texture I think it's such a beautiful thing and also women feeling more um, informed mm-hmm. about the brands that they are supporting yeah 
you know, um, being more willing to support, you know, black owned brands when it comes to black um, makeup, black hair care. Um, and I just think it's beautiful. And I think it's something that's going to continue to progress. And it will be so beautiful if we have a generation of young women that are growing up and are seeing, you know, m you know, more of the uh, Wakanda, <laughs> more of the, the Black Panther type of representation, you know, more beautiful Afro hair. And not just sometimes when I talk about Afro hair to, right. you know, people who are not, you know, a, a Black, they... Uh, immediately assume you know mixed heritage hair you know those kind of curls but then they don't understand you know there's different textures there's the 4c mm. there's the coarse one there's the one where you know can be this long one drop of water bam it's like <laughs> it's it's like this and i'm i think it's a really beautiful thing that women are learning how to just embrace their natural mm. hair and also during lockdown you know a lot of women just gave their skin a break yeah I must say that we had we had no choice. Time. We had no choice. This is one of the first times I've put on makeup in a long time, and I've actually gained so much confidence over lockdown in not having to wear makeup that I don't wear it every mm. day anymore. You know, even if I'm going out like to the shop, it's fine as long as I've got eyebrows, so I don't look like a thumb. You know, it's <laughs> it's all good. But, um, Sorry, did you just say not look like a thumb? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I severely overplucked my eyebrows, and so there's hardly anything there at the moment. <laughs> but um, as long as I've got brows on, Lily, and I'm I'm good. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> okay, um, that threw <laughs> that threw me. Okay, so I get that, and uh, you know, and actually. I have to say with this lockdown, it gave a lot of us a moment to actually see what we actually need. And, you know, the, we, some of us, you know, I've never been one to do the contouring and stuff like that, but just being able to just touch skin and be with your, your own natural skin, I think was a very, very powerful thing as well yeah. to happen. So, you know, we're looking at everything that you're doing and we're going to say, what are the top three things that you, the top three lessons that you wish you learned before setting up Style Mags? Oh, wow. Very good question. Lesson number one is if it's cheap, it's cheap for a reason. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the corners that I tried to cut in the mm -hmm. early stages to save money, not only cost me more money in the long run, they mm. cost me time that I couldn't afford to lose. Either. Right. Yeah. Um, second lesson is do your research before you outsource um, certain aspects of your business mm -hmm. or take on board freelancers. Um, I took on board um, somebody to help with one of my social media channels. Mm -hmm. And um, it was one of my Twitter accounts and they got it blocked. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, so I, I kind of learned the hard way that mm. sometimes the reviews that you see on these, um, like these platforms for hiring freelancers, mm -hmm. they're not always legit. Always do a trial run first, um, monitor them if you can. I was a bit too trusting um, mm. in that instance. And um, the third lesson I wish I learned was um, how important confidence is. Mm. because there have been times where I have been so tired I feel like I've done so much progress is slow and all the rest of it and in those moments it's like my confidence levels sink and I'm, una I'm unable to actually see that actually wow you've actually done so much mm. and it's just the importance of being able to cheer yourself on or having people around you that can cheer you on when you get to that stage. A year in, you know, it's a lot better now, but had I have kind of built my support network earlier on, I think I would have been able to handle certain setbacks a little bit better. Those are very powerful lessons and thank you for sharing them with us. Yeah. <laughs> so 
we've come to that point in the show where we get to talk about our so loud moment of the week. So, Candy, what is your so loud moment of the week? So my so loud moment of the week, I'll speak directly to you guys. My so loud moment of the week was having an interview that I did with um, Just Entrepreneurs Mag, um, featured as a woman in tech. Um, Thank you. (laughs) For me, um, this was a big achievement because I felt like a lot of the technical expertise that I've kind of gained along the way wasn't really being acknowledged or recognized. Mm. Um, People see you as an entrepreneur, you know, there's so many entrepreneurs, but I actually had to learn a little bit of coding. I had to learn about, you know, different databases. I had Mm. to learn about keeping people's information secure. So it was lovely that this platform, you know, what they honored me in that way as a woman of tech and allowed me to share that aspect of my story. Awesome. That is actually incredible. So uh, where can people read uh, this um, Yeah, I think interview? If you can just go to justentrepreneurs.co.uk okay. and just if you look in their menu, they've got an interview section and I am in the women in tech part okay. of that. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we'll have that link in your bio on our show page and so that people can go in and, and look at that as well. So well done Thank with that. Thank you so much. So you talked about, you know, confidence being, you know, dip in, you talked about all the other things that you have experienced on your journey. So when you first started, how did you work through, move past feeling like, you know, that feeling that comes up where you feel like you're an imposter, you don't know what you don't know. And so how did you work through that? Okay. Um, I think it's really important, first of all, to say, you know, there's a fine line between, um, narcissistic denial (laughs) and um and um fear and you know low self-esteem um i didn't want to just just on the back of what i believe Mm -hmm. um allow myself to think i had a great platform and i was doing well Mm -hmm. um one thing that did give me confidence to keep going um, other than, you know, like my, my husband or my, my son who thinks everything's amazing. Mommy, mommy, mommy. <laughs> um, it was feedback from people who were actually using the service. Mm-hmm. You know, when I would go out into the communities and I would speak to people and I would show them like on my tablet, you know, this is the platform. I'll show mm-hmm. them on my phone. Look, it's responsive. Mm-hmm. So even on your phone, what phone do you have? Oh, don't worry about it. It will still work. You know, right. I was able to demonstrate that this is not some technological thing that doesn't work properly, that's scary. Mm-hmm. And to see them use it and interact with it. And also, I think um, when people started registering themselves on the website and I would wake up and there'll be like four or five new people registered on the website, I'll be like, it works, you know? <laughs> It actually works. The The process works. Everything was right. fine. They didn't email me. There was no problems. And, I, and, and that gave me confidence, just celebrating the small victories and not being afraid to make improvements when you do come across something that's not working as planned. Yeah. Well, that's, that's amazing. And so let me ask you this. What advice would you give your 18-year-old self? Oh, I would tell my 18 year old self to be confident, Mm. to enjoy this time now, to not worry so much about, because about your peers or how things are, or, you know, how you think they should be. Just enjoy Mm. it. Enjoy it. Try everything, you know, explore everything and find out what you like and just do it. Do it knowing that in the future, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Great advice. Great advice. So I think here's this question because you've touched on it being that you're a founder of a business, you are a mom and a wife. How do you balance your time or is balance an illusion? No, 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 no. It's not an illusion. You, you have to balance it or you, you burn out. Um, I was asked a similar question um, for the Just Entrepreneurs interview and um, I I, 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 how I do, I plan everything. Right. And then I scale back. Okay. I scale back because some of my plans are ambitious. 
So I make the plans according to, okay, in an ideal situation, I'd be able to complete this much this week. Mm -hmm. But then I revisit it and I'll be like, okay, I can just do this much and the platform won't fall apart. It will still be okay. So let me just do this much. And to maintain the work-life balance on the weekend, um, I don't check social media. Okay. Um, My um, posts, most of them are scheduled. I may log in if um, there's a notification, like if somebody's put a not so nice comment on somebody else's work, I'll log Mm -hmm. in, I'll edit that. But um, I take a digital break on the weekends as much as possible in regards to social interaction. Um, I wake up around 5 a.m. Okay. So between like 5 and 7, sometimes like after I've had my time of prayer, because I'm a woman of of faith, um, I will catch up on some work then. Um, Yeah. And in the evenings, I chill out with the family. (laughs) That's very important, especially the fact that I like the fact that you say you take that digital break and you make time to just unwind. And I think it more and more people are getting to that point of the, yeah, yeah, we need the, we need that real time, real life time rather than just being stuck to the phone. Yeah. Or you can burn out and, you know, you, if you burn out, you're not able to continue doing what you do. And yeah. I think if you um, set yourself up to do too much, you can set your business up to fail before it's mm. really had time to, to, to root itself firmly into the ground. And I think that's, that's, I think that's that message, especially for women of color, you know, whether brown and black, we need yeah. to remember because we carry this, these ideas that we are so much stronger and we have this strong identity. And so we must go, yep. go, go 24 seven. So I, I'm, I'm, I love that advice about really setting yourself up so that you can have the time to really mm-hmm. nurture yourself and your business without burnout. Yeah. Cool. So I am so glad to have had you on the show. I just have couple more questions and then we'll be done so i think my couple more questions so let's work on this one um what are your current self-care practices self-care practices oh um that's put me on the spot i i like sleep sleep is good (laughs) sleep is great (laughs) i i like sleep and um i'm kind to myself like when it comes to food I don't take it easy with the pounded yam. I, you know, sis, sis. I, go hard. <laughs> I go hard. I think it's so important because when you're happy, you release endorphins that just mm. kind of help you do so much more. So my self-care practices are to eat well, right? get good sleep. And sometimes mm-hmm. that means just turning your phone off or putting it on flight mode, mm. um, like from about eight o'clock or nine o'clock. Otherwise it's hard to kind of you know, wind down, um, and laughing Mm. and laughing. Kevin Hart cracks me up. Um, I follow him on Instagram, Will Smith. I just think it's important to just laugh sometimes. Um, especially with all that's been going on. Um, we need the laughter. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm not ashamed to say like during the lockdown period, I felt like I took a hit, like my mental health took a hit. It was a lot, so much going on. There was, Mm conflict um you know between you know one of my friendship groups that was a very mixed group you know over racial issues um nurseries were closed my son was at home I still had to work full time I still had to run my platform you Mm. know there was so much going on and I think sometimes with all that was going on people were still forgetting to be kind to themselves yeah and to kind of like you know say to themselves whoa there's a pandemic you know, you can't even go to Westfield anymore and eat McDonald's. You're stuck at home. So be kind to yourself. You know, I, I think life is so short and, Mm. you know, finding out that a school friend exactly the same age as me, same birthday as me passed, um, um, from Corona, uh, at the beginning of lockdown, it just kind of opened my eyes to seeing that, you know, life is so short. And it's important to live it to the fullest. Be confident. Be happy. Your life is a gift. Don't let anyone ever make you feel like you're not doing enough, like you're not enough, you're not good enough. You are. You're alive. You're here. Mm -hmm. Celebrate that. 
And that's really, really important. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think you just kind of nailed the head. The, <laughs> yeah. you just landed it with that. And, you know, I'm sorry about the loss of your friend and I can't even imagine what, you know, their family are going through. So yeah. it's, yeah, it, it is, it is something. And I think this year, 2020 has brought home that, that we have to celebrate the time that we are here. Yeah. So, you know, Candy, thank you. Thank you so, so much for being on the show. Now I have one last question. Okay. How can people reach you? Okay. Uh, you can connect with me on Instagram at Candy Ellie's World. Okay. Um, you can check out the Styles Mag platform for yourself. It's www. I mean, it's right behind me. <laughs> stylesmag.com that's s-t-y-l-z-m-a-g.com um yeah we are very friendly i mean i am customer services i am marketing i'm everything I'm, I'm <laughs> just, for now, just for now just for now <laughs> so if you get in touch i will look after you um yeah so get in touch say hi and lillian thank you so much thank you so much for having me on your show you're welcome um, this is my first interview Oh, video interview. Um, I was really nervous, but you've just been amazing. You've made well, me feel you. so comfortable, and yeah, I can't wait to to see it and to share it. So, thank you so much. You, it's been my absolute pleasure. And you know, I I got the call from our favorite PR person. <laughs> say no. So, um, but it's been delightful to have you on the show. Um, and. I am looking forward to the growth of style mags. I've also been looking, checking out some of the tailors on there going I'm call <laughs> that one and that one. Cause it's, it's a great resource to have. So thank you for the work that you're doing. And I'm looking forward to actually having you back on the show in the future. Thank you. I look forward to coming back on and hopefully talking about how we have thousands of people on the directory. Awesome. Awesome. And you know, who knows, once we meet in person, we might do a variant of um, fashionista sister type interview with you in person. Definitely. I'd love that. <laughs> I'd love that. Thank so you very much. you're welcome folks. It's a wrap. You have to go and check out style mags with the work that they're doing. If you want to find those hidden tailors that sometimes feel like you're conducting a deal to get <laughs> you no longer have to do that you don't have to call that auntie you don't like anymore for that tailor no 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 <laughs> you don't have to do that and then have to suck up and then listen to her her story about what she saw on whatsapp no <laughs> that's so <accurate. laughs> yeah. like i called for a tailor why do i have to hear about the woman who got shot on something on you like <laughs> all for this but we digress um yeah go on to stylemags.com take a look at what candy is doing actually connect out with with her because as a woman in tech she's creating a platform that celebrates not just black women but black and brown women creating a diverse conversation around beauty and cultural exceptions and how to actually engage with different culture from a perspective of beauty hair skin what makes us as women so i think it's more than just the fashion it's more than just the beauty it's the conversation around how are we learning each other from the perspective and lens of of the beauty industry and the fashion industry it's about representation and this is what she's doing so take a look at style mags which is stylemags.com go on to there connect with her follow her youtube but most importantly, listen to her story. So it's a wrap. It's a wrap. You know what to do. If you like the show, give us an iTunes review, drop us a message, subscribe to our YouTube. You know where to find us. And if you want to be on the show, you know what to do. Reach out to us now on our various socials. You have them and we'll love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. You've been listening to The Shine Out Loud Show. If you want to connect with us or let us know what you thought of today's show, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Shine Out Show.